Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, inshallah we'll continue our talk about Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Harun alayhum salam And last week we ended by saying that Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Harun went to Pharaoh and his people and they invited them to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to believe that Musa is his messenger. And to let the people, the children of Israel, free to leave Egypt. And they showed them their miracles. The stick that turned to a huge snake. And Sayyidina Musa, he put his hand under his arm and brought it out. And it was extremely bright and white. And Sayyidina, and, and the Pharaoh, he said, you are a magician. So we are going to gather magicians for you. And then we're going to have a showdown on the day of the feast. Now the day of the feast came and Pharaoh sent all over the country his soldier to gather anybody who claims to be a magician. The expert, the average, the so and so, it doesn't matter. Some scholars say that Pharaoh gathered more than 10,000 magicians and they all came on the day, the feast, the day of the feast and now the whole population is gathered watching the showdown between Sayyidina Musa and the magicians. And somebody may say, one person against more than 10,000 people? The answer is yes. One person, when you have Allah on your side, nobody can win, can win against you. Nobody. You are going to be always victor. You're going to win. Now, the magicians were very motivated because they went to Pharaoh and asked him, if we win, are we going to get rewards? And he said, yes, you will get tremendous reward. And not just that, but you are going to be very close to me. Just imagine the most powerful person that are going to be close to him. So just imagine the happy life they are going to enjoy. So they are extremely motivated. Then they told Sayyidina Musa, either you throw or we'll throw first. Which one do you prefer? So Sayyidina Musa told them, you throw first. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَ أَلْقُوا فَلَمَّا أَلْقَوْ سَحَرُ أَعْيُنَ النَّاسِ وَاسْتَرْهَبُوهُمْ وَجَاءُوا بِسِحْرٍ عَظِيمٍ He said, throw. And when they threw, they bewitched the eyes of the people and struck, struck terror into them and they produced a great magic. So what happened when they start to throw their sticks and their ropes and all of that? They made people feel and it, it appeared to the people when they're looking at it that they are snakes, they are moving. So people looked at it and were shocked. All kind of snakes running everywhere. And Allah is telling us, and they produced great magic. That's why you remember in the, in the khutbah I said before, Allah sent Musa with magic. Because Egyptians were very advanced in magic. So he has to respond in the same kind. So they produced great magic. And Musa inside started to feel fear. fear. He started to be afraid. So Allah told him, don't be afraid. And he said to him, وَأَلْقِي مَا فِي يَمِينِكَ تَلْقَفْ مَا صَنَعُوا And throw that which is in your right hand, it will swallow that which they have made. So Sayyidina Musa threw his stick and it changed to a huge snake and swallowed all the other things, everything. When the magician saw that, Allah is saying, فَأُلْقِيَ الصَّحَرَةُ سُجَّدًا قَالُوا آمَنَّا بِرَبِّ هَارُونَ وَمُوسَى so the magicians fell down prostrate. They said, we believe in the Lord of Harun and Musa. Why did they believe? They believed immediately because they know everything they're doing is fake. If anybody knows what's magic, they know it. And what Sayyidina Musa did, no way is magic. There is a power above Sayyidina Musa that made that snake come to life and swallow everything else. So they knew this is real power from God. 
it's not a power of a magician because if it's a magician they are expert in magic so this is a power from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they prostrated in front of Sayyidina Musa not to Sayyidina Musa but they prostrated to Allah and they said we believe in the God of Harun and Musa now in front of the whole population of Egypt and his inner circle the people around him Pharaoh feel he has been defeated so he started by saying how do you believe in the God of Musa and Harun and I did not give you permission look at the arrogance you can't believe in anything without my permission and then they did not revert they did not they were not shaking the magician nothing made a difference so he promised them with torture he said I will cut your hands and your feet and I'm gonna crucify you on the trees until you die they did not revert and on that day the Pharaoh killed more than 10,000 people the magicians all of them killed all of them look at the arrogance but there is a lesson here for us to learn a lot of time we give up on people and Allah is telling us look at the magicians in the morning they were kafir they were magicians they wanted to defeat Musa and in the evening they were believer and going to paradise so don't give up on people people change just give them a chance now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided because Pharaoh does not want to obey and believe in Allah he's gonna send him signs punishment and the punishment was several things extreme famine flood all the land that they are cultivating the crops were flooded everything is flooded and then he sent locust locust is a small insect when it comes it comes in millions you look at them you think there is a, a cloud coming but when they pass anywhere nothing green is left nothing everything green they eat so he sent locusts on them so it ate everything that they have and then he sent lice those insects that come in the head and make you scratch why did he send lice because lice will make them the whole day they can't do anything they're just scratching their head going crazy and then he sent frogs that took me a while to figure out why he sent frogs everywhere everywhere millions and millions of frogs in the house frogs in the bedroom frogs in the street frogs everywhere why is that because frogs if you look at frogs frogs they become active at night and when they come active they start to make a very loud and annoying noise so millions of frogs were making that noise at the same time people couldn't sleep couldn't sleep it drives you crazy after one day two days you can't take it this is torture you can't take it and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent blood on them all the water turned to blood everything water in your cup turns to blood the river turned to blood everything any water became blood so what happened Pharaoh became scared he was worried that people will revolt a revolution will happen they can't sleep they can't eat they can't do anything so he was worried so he said to Sayyidina Musa why don't you ask Allah to remove that punishment and I'll let the children of Israel go with you so Sayyidina Musa made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asked him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stopped the punishment but Pharaoh was a liar and he refused to let the children of Israel go and he started to convince the people around him he said he's no messenger he's a liar if he was a messenger from God he would have sent a lot of gold with him or he would have sent a few angels to come with him to prove that he's coming from God he's a liar so the people said yeah we believe you now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only he disobeyed but he broke his promise the punishment went to a higher level so Allah is saying وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَى مُوسَىٰ أَنْ أَسْرِ بِعِبَادِي إِنَّكُمْ مُتَّبَعُونَ 
and we revealed to Musa, travel by night with my servants, the children of Israel, for surely you will be pursued. Pharaoh will follow you. He's telling him, leave and Pharaoh will follow you. So they moved in the direction of Jerusalem, Al-Quds, the holy mosque over there. So they moved in that direction and they went in the direction of the Red Sea to cross the Red Sea. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا تَرَاءَ الْجَمْعَانِ قَالَ أَصْحَابُ مُوسَىٰ إِنَّ لَمُدْرَكُونَ قَالَ كَلَّا إِنَّ مَعْيَ رَبِّ سَيَهْدِينَ And when the two hosts, the two groups saw each other, the army and the people of Musa, the children of Israel, they can see each other. So it's a mile or two, not that much. The companions of Musa said, we are sure to be overtaken. They're going to catch us. There is no way. It's a couple of miles, just 15, 20 minutes, they're going to catch us. So Sayyidina Musa, he answered, he said, no, just think about his sincere belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, logically, common sense, yes, there is a sea in front of you and the soldier behind you. It doesn't need a genius to figure out that they are going to catch you. But he has faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, surely my Lord is with me. He will guide me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَى مُوسَىٰ أَنْ أَضْرِبْ بَعَصَاكَ الْبَحْرِ فَانْفَلَقَ فَكَانَ كُلُّ فِرْقٍ كَالطَّوْضِ الْعَظِيمِ Then we revealed to Musa, strike the sea with your stick, and it parted, and each part was like a huge mountain. So Sayyidina Musa, Allah told him, hit the Red Sea with your stick. And the Red Sea parted split dry land was in the middle and the two sides his Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is say as huge as mountains and they pass in the middle and then Allah is saying وَأَنْجَيْنَا مُوسَى وَمَنْ مَعْهُ أَجْمَعِينَ ثُمَّ أَغْرَقْنَا الْآخَرِينَ and we saved Musa and all with those with him then we drowned the others as soon as Sayyidina Musa passed and the children of Israel the army, Pharaoh and his army were behind them. And they were all in the middle of the Red Sea. And Allah ordered the Red Sea to close back. And they all drowned. This story just remind me, was it, remember the law I mentioned to you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our first khutbah. The law is a formula that Allah is saying, trust Allah. Plus, do everything you can, equal victory, equal success. This is what Sayyidina Musa did. He trusted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did everything he can. Took the children of Israel, traveled, went all of there, until he got to the sea. And Allah did miracles. Some of us think, you know, this is miracles for Prophet. Allah is not telling us that story to impress us. He's telling us that story to tell us that if you trust Allah and you do everything you can, He will do miracles for you. You may not know that they are miracles, but He will arrange everything for you to make you successful. He's going to get you out of debt. He's going to get you a job. He's going to make your family better. He's going to get rid of your sickness. But trust Allah and do everything you can. Now, Pharaoh is drowning. So Allah, is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, حَتَّى إِذَا أَدْرَكَهُ الْغَرَقُ قَالَ آمَنْتُ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا الَّذِي آمَنَتْ بِهِ بَنُهُ إِسْرَائِيلَ وَأَنَا مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Until one drowning overtook him, he said, I believe that there is no God but He in whom the children of Israel believe, and I am one of the Muslims. But Allah drowned him. And Allah is saying after that, فَالْيَوْمَ نُنَجِّيكَ بِبَدَنِكَ لِتَكُونَ لِمَنْ خَلْفَكَ آيَةً so this day we shall save your dead body out from the sea, that you may be a sign to those who come after you. It's kind of, th this man said, I believe in Allah, and Allah let him drown. Why is that? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another place in the Quran is telling us the secret. He's saying, وَلَيْسَتِ التَّوْبَةُ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السَّيِّئَاتِ حَتَّى إِذَا حَضَرَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتُ قَالَ إِنِّي تُبْتُ الْآنَ وَلَا الَّذِينَ يَمُوتُونَ وَهُمْ كُفَّارٌ أُولَئِكَ أَعْتَدْنَ لَهُمْ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا 
Allah is saying a repentance is not for those who continue to do evil deeds until when death comes to one of them, he says, now I repent, nor for those who die while they are unbelievers. For them we have prepared a painful punishment. So it's not you're going to play tricks with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like Fir'aun trying to do. Oh, I'm going to drown. I believe in you. Now he gets him out. Uh, they go back to what he's doing. No. If you are insisting on doing the wrong, insisting on doing the haram, insisting on disobeying Allah, then it's not going to work. And the key thing that we understand why Fir'aun was punished is because Fir'aun was unjust. Fir'aun was discriminating against the children of Israel, was terrorizing them. And it was, he was unjust to them. And remember the Prophet Ali والسلام, said in a hadith, beware of the supplication of the oppressed, watch out. For there is no barrier between it and Allah. When somebody is oppressed and he makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is nothing between his dua and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer his dua sooner or later. So if you are unjust to your, your spouse, to your children, to your friends, to your employee, to anybody, fear Allah. Because Allah will give justice to the person you're committing injustice against them. He will give them victory. So don't do that. Now the children of Israel, they saw the miracle, the power of Allah, and they just crossed the sea. They are now on the other side. So, so look at the first thing that they do. And we took the children of Israel across the sea. Then they came upon a people devoted to worshipping some idols of theirs. People sitting and worshipping statues, idols. They said, Oh Moses, make for us a God just as they have gods. Do you believe that? They just crossed and saw the miracle of Allah and the power of Allah. And immediately, Oh, we want a, a, an idol so we can sit and worship it. So he said, Indeed, you are people behaving ignorantly. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked Musa to come to the mountain because he wanted to give him new revelation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, you're going to come for 30 days. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَوَاعَدْنَ مُوسَى ثَلَاثِينَ لَيْلَةً وَأَتْمَمْنَاهَا بِعَشْرٍ فَتَمَّ مِقَاطُ رَبِّهِ أَرْبَعِينَ لَيْلَةً وَقَالَ مُوسَى لِأَخِيهِ هَارُونَ خُلُفْنِي فِي قَوْمِ وَأَصْلِحْ وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ سَبِيلَ الْمُفْسِدِينَ and we made an appointment with Moses for 30 nights and completed them with 10 more. The 10 more, Sayyidina Musa didn't know about them. When he was up in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah told him, you're going to stay 10 more days. There is a wisdom behind that. So the term of his Lord was completed as 40 nights. And Moses said to his brother Aaron, Harun, replace me among my people. Do right by them and do not follow the way of the corruptors. And say, Sayyidina Musa went in the top of the mountain and in the presence of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, وَكَتَبْنَا لَهُ فِي الْأَلْوَاحِ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مَوْعِظَةً وَتَفْصِيلًا لُكُلِّ شَيْءٍ فَخُذْهَا بِقُوَّةٍ وَأْمُرْ قَوْمَكَ وَأْمُرْ قَوْمَكَ يَأْخُذُ بِأَحْسَنِهَا And we wrote for him on the tablets something of all things, instruction and explanation for all things. Take them with determination and order your people to take the best of it. So he went up there, Allah gave him the commandment, and he wrote them to him on the tablets. And that's what Allah was, Sayyidina Musa was doing while the people are downstairs. And after 30 days, Sayyidina Musa didn't come back. So the children of Israel start to wonder, what is Sayyidina Musa? He said 30 days, 30 days passed, he's not back. There was one man with them called a Samiri. A Samari was an evil and jealous person. He doesn't believe in Allah, doesn't believe in anything. He believed in himself. And he was jealous. So he knew that the, the, the children of Israel were always admiring the Egyptian. They look at them as the masters. They look at them as the sophisticated people. So he told them, I know the God that Sayyidina Musa was worshipping. I can build the God for you like it. 
give me your jewelry and your gold. And he took all the jewelry and gold and built for them a calf, a baby cow. He told them, this is the God of Musa. And Musa is lost. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make that cow make sound. So when Sayyidina Musa hear it, he will know where to come. And he's going to come back to you guys. So they did it. And Allah is saying, وَاتَّخَذَ قَوْمُ مُوسَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ مِنْ حُلِيهِمْ عِجْلًا جَسَدًا لَهُ خُوَارٍ And the people of Moses made after his departure from their ornaments, the jewelry that they have, a calf, an image having a cow sound. The air one was coming from the mouth and coming out from the rear, it made the sound of a cow, very loud sound. And he said to them, this is your God, this is the God of Musa. And they started to worship the cow. Because it's, they're still in their mind, they remember the Egyptian. Egypt, they had a god called Apis, which is, was a bull. That was one of the gods of the Egyptian. So they said, okay, now Musa is worshipping a cow, we're going to worship it. Sayyidina Harun tried to stop that, tried to advise them. This is wrong, this is not the god of, of Musa and my god. But started to split the people and Sayyidina Harun worried that they may have a civil war. The children of Israel starting to kill, killing each other. So he said, I'm going to wait for Musa السلام, when he comes back. I'm not going to do anything. So Sayyidina Musa came down and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ أَلَمْ يَعِدُكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ وَعْدًا حَسَنًا أَفَطَلَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْعَهْدُ أَمْ أَرَدْتُمْ أَمْ أَرَدْتُمْ أَنْ يَحِلَّ عَلَيْكُمْ غَضَبٌ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُمْ مَوْعِدِي He said, Oh my people, did your Lord not make you a good promise? The promise of going to the Holy Land to get to Jerusalem and a promise of paradise. Did then the promise seem too long in coming? Or did you wish that the wrath of your Lord descend upon you? So you broke your promise to me. This is a message from Musa to us as well. Musa is saying, be patient. Sometime we read in the Quran, Allah is promising us, after difficulty comes ease. But we're not patient. We say, oh, Allah said that, but nothing happening. That's what Sayyidina Musa. Is it the promise of Allah seems that it took too long for you? Be patient. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, ask me and I will give you. Sometimes you say, I asked Allah, but nothing. They didn't do anything for me. That's Allah is saying, be patient. As Sayyidina Musa is telling us, be patient. The promise of Allah is coming. Then he brought a Samiri, that evil person. He brought him. And he said to him, Wandur ila ilahika alladhi dhalta alayhi aakifa. Lanuharriqannahu thumma lanansifannahu fil yammi nasfa. And look at your, go at your God to which you remain devoted, we will surely burn it and scatter its dust over the sea. So he destroyed that calf and threw it in the sea and burned it and kicked out a Samari. Now after all that evil, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his great mercy, he forgave them. And not just he forgave them, then he ordered clouds to give them shade because they're walking in the desert, going to the Holy Land in Jerusalem. So he ordered the cloud to shade them. And he ordered manna and salwa. Manna is a sugary substance that comes down on the trees. Allah ordered that, that uh, substance to come down on the tree every day in the morning. They shake the trees, it fall down. And they eat it, give them energy, give them food and all of that. And he ordered as well a bird called like, like a quail, a little bit smaller than a pigeon. Every day they come down and walk and go next to the children of Israel. Everyone can take whatever they want. They don't run, they don't fly, and eat whatever they want. But only they can eat and they can take for today. They cannot save for tomorrow. If they save anything, it will rotten, it will spoil, just for the day. So Allah treated them very nicely. And then they were thirsty. We want water. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Sayyidina Musa, strike with this, your, the, your stick the stone. He hit a stone and 12 springs came out from that stone. Because there were 12 tribes, the children of Israel. So each tribe had one spring to drink from. So they don't fight with each other. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He's telling us about those things, He's telling us, don't worry about your risk, about your sustenance. A lot of time we're worried. I see everything is dark. Everything is closed. There is no hope. I can't find a job. I can't find any money. There is no hope. Allah is saying, don't worry. I'll give you from sources you cannot imagine. And remember the children of Israel. I brought down the, the sugary thing and those birds for them to eat. So he's telling us, don't be worried about your risk. Don't be worried about your sustenance. I'm going to take care of you. Just trust me. I'll tell you a story that's kind of interesting. Back home, a family I knew, they had a driver, a Muslim driver. And he was a good Muslim. Not because he's going to the masjid and all of that, no. Because I always saw him he helping other people, always. He has limited resources, but always helping other people. One day he came to them and he said, I need some help. They said, can you wait a little bit or do you need the help now? He said, no, I can wait. They said, okay, we have a guest staying in our house. We want you to take him. He's going to go to visit certain people and stay with them the whole morning until they finish and bring them back. So he took the guest and went to the person they are going to visit and they both of them went around several places and then he went back home at around lunchtime. And then they said to him, so what is the help that you wanted? He said, no, 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 never mind. They said, what do you mean never mind? In the morning you want help, now you're saying never mind. He said, I went, we went to a person and we visited that person. And after we finished that trip all over the place, the person gave me a sum of money exactly the amount of money I wanted to borrow from you. Exactly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Wallah is doing miracles for you. But this is, I had the chance to know the story. But Allah does miracles and we don't know the stories. So trust Allah. Don't be afraid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always will take care of you if you trust Him and do everything you can.